Hi guys, what's up? It's Alex here. Welcome back to the penultimate round of the Go Kart Championship in 2016. Thank you guys for tuning in on the main channel this year to these videos. Basically, this sort of whole series should be finished uh, by about sort of June or July time. So it's sort of you could say like a spring championship, but it's sort of technically the main championship for us anyway. But thank you guys for tuning in nonetheless. Let's try and get 100 likes on this fifth and penultimate round of the series. Round number six will take place in about a month's time, so we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in once again. I do appreciate it. So you can see on the, the screen right now, we've got four camera views. It's probably a bit uh, disorientating to look at all four at once. But, you know, if you focus on one and then you can look at the battles here and there down the line. So top left is my dad's camera view. Top right is John's. Bottom left is Tom's. And bottom right is mine. So, yeah, you can see what everyone's wearing as well. So my dad's got the blue overalls and the white helmet. I've got the blue overalls and the black helmet. Uh... Tom's got the dark blue overalls and the black and white helmet and John's got the sort of navy overalls and the red helmet so you know who is who and going to this round I've got 109 points and uh, Tom has got 78 and my dad's got 64 John's got 46 and Will's got 35 off, off, obviously after dominating that last round and uh, James has 24 for getting two, uh, 12, two second places sorry, um, in that fourth round so yeah but basically Apart from that last round, it's basically been us four for this whole season, but I've really enjoyed it, I'm not going to lie guys, it's been a lot of fun. So, you can see here, we're going to focus on the top right for a second here, because John, he's been getting faster each and every time this season. I mean, he came to one round last year, I think, or was it really at the start of this year? It was an endurance race nonetheless, but basically, since then, he's just got faster, faster and faster, and he's really got a lot faster than I expected maybe over these last few times here. So, John, you can see top right. He's closing down on my dad here in qualifying. He's looking to probably get an overtake done at some point to try and get a faster lap in. But at the moment, he's dropped a little bit back here. My dad going across the line. John's going across the line. It's probably only about just only over a second gap there. So maybe there's a big enough gap. John go for a move. It looks like he's faster down the top straight here up to the top hairpin. My dad going a bit wide here. But it gets a bit sideways on the exit. John's going to be closing in here. But obviously, qualifying, it doesn't really matter about uh, who comes out on top, obviously, at the end of the session. It really matters who finishes in first position on the timing sheets and it was one of those weird conditions I mean I've had to use a bit of saturation adjust on the top left camera my dad's camera so it might look a bit like sunnier than it really was I mean looking at Tom's and mine is probably the most realistic you know you're looking at in terms of how dark it was it's pretty dark pretty grey you know lots of cloud cover and the rain was you know spitting as well oh John's gone for a move down the inside John's got the move he's gone past my dad there but Unfortunately for John, it's not a move of position in the race, but it'll give him a bit of clear track here to now hopefully set himself a good lap time. But yeah, so that's, that's good for John getting an overtake done. I think he said that's the first overtake he's done. So, I mean, you know, it might sound a bit silly, but it's always good to get, you know, that first experience in of actually getting a proper overtake in, not one where you've just overtaken because someone else has spun out. But yeah, good for John there. And that's going to be a, clear, a bit of clear track with the last sort of minute, two minutes of the session to go and set a lap time. So. You can see uh, here on the bottom cameras here, it's quite dark, there's a bit of rain on the camera lenses, so I'm sorry, but there's, you know, throughout this whole video there is going to be a bit of rain on the camera lenses, there's nothing we can really do about that, obviously in the middle of the races you can't really, you know, go up and wipe the camera and stop and all that, but yeah, so I saw Tom L going really fast and obviously, you know, flying off into the distance and I was sort of feeling a bit sort of gusted at this point because I realised this is going to be a really tough task for me here to try and get anything from today. I mean, as soon as I realised how fast Tom L was here, I was just like, oh no, this is going to be a day where he's going to dominate everything. But you can see he's setting some really good lap times. He's been really fast. He's been pulling away by so much over his last few laps and he's actually closing in on my dad and John. I mean, you know, there's only about a minute or so of this session to go, but he could still lap one of them. So we'll see. But oh, Tom's going a bit wide over the sort of cobbly bit on the outside, but you know, managed to keep it going, not go right off the track here, but the rain, it was sort of intermittent, so at some points it was coming down quite a lot, some points it wasn't coming down at all, and uh, sometimes, you know, some points throughout these, you know, three sessions, actually the sun came out a little bit, so it's really tough to judge the conditions lap by lap, and the first race, you know, believe me, it was very exciting, so we'll get to that obviously in a minute here, but up to the top hairpin for me at least, I'm really focusing on just trying to get the perfect lap time in here, but I just, I just wasn't feeling it too much today. I just couldn't feel it in the car. I wasn't feeling like I was going 100%. But you know, that's just probably me complaining here. I just couldn't, you know, seem to get the 100% out of the car. But it is what it is, and you've just got to, you know, try best with, you know, what you got. So 
you know, with just under, well, this could even be the last lap if we look at Tom's side of the screen here, and I don't know, I'm not too sure, we'll see, but this could be the last lap of qualifying here, and obviously, John will be going across the start finish line first, is it the checker flag? Yeah, there's the check flag waving. So there's the lap times all completed there. John's going to cross the line. My dad's going to go across the line there. Tom's going to go across the line just behind him. And uh, just a little bit of a wait for me to come around the final corner and uh, up to the start finish line. And we'll be finishing off qualifying there and seeing what the qualifying order is. So there's me across the line. And let's see what we can do. So, well, qualifying, as I expected, at least from seeing Tom off go off to the distance, he gets pole, I was second place, um, my dad managed to get third place, even though he did get overtaken by John, and uh, John himself finishes in fourth position so this is it, we're going to the first race of the day and John's just getting into his group position and everyone will be set for this first race of the weekend, looking up to the lights of every uh, little camera so you can see sort of top or middle left and uh, you can see that sort of black um, part where is where the light is located so we'll be looking up at that any second now when the marshal signals any second now we'll be looking over at the lights any second now maybe not too sure but yeah, this has got to make sure they get this start perfect, and it, you know, you know, put you in good stead for this race here. So everyone waiting for the lights, and the lights are out, and away we go for this first race of the weekend. Tom gets a great start as usual for me, at least I got a better start than I thought I would up to the first corner here, and it's actually been coming down quite a bit in the break here, and the rain has been coming down a lot. Everyone's going to be sliding wide here. No one expects the really bad conditions here, and everyone's sliding all over the place through the first couple of corners here. John has got into third position. He's ahead of my dad through the first corner here and now everyone's going to be taking this cautious here really slippery stuff making sure we don't do anything silly on these first few laps of the race here everyone's going a whole lot slower than they normally are here John getting a little bit sideways out that corner there giving my dad a bit of an opportunity to get a bit you know quite close behind him here and up to the top corner looking at the bottom screen here I'm chasing down Tom here I'm feeling this is a good opportunity to possibly grab a race victory here if he's not going to be 100% obviously with the wet conditions which he hasn't raced in much before and obviously I've got quite a bit of experience myself John's going very sideways at the top of the screen there but that's really closing in on him there is he going to manage to get past doesn't look like at the moment he's got enough of a pace advantage to get past there but John obviously finding this a bit tricky didn't probably expect the rain to come down in the middle of the session here and for me at least I'm closing down on Tom Allen and my dad is going for a move is he down the inside of John it's side by side stuff up to the fast right hander it's still side by side John you can see on his camera view now is just probably eased off a little bit there up to the top hairpin now it's side by side stuff still up to the top hairpin and who's going to break later? Pretty even stuff. As, a, as my dad's on the inside, he manages to get past all oh, John. We need to hit the back of my dad there. I think my dad's saying sorry there for t taking a bit of a weird line through that corner. But yeah, so John's going to have to run and get that gap back down again. But look at me, I'm trying to get past some. The action's all going on at once. This is one of the most crazy starts of the race ever. None of us expected it. It was sort of like driving on sheet ice for the first few laps of the race. I know it sounds stupid, but it really was like that. We were sliding all over the place in the first few laps of this race. So it was really, really tough. And you can see we'll st still see sliding all over the place up to the top hairpin here. And the rain is definitely coming down more and more throughout this race here. Sorry for the, obviously the water on the camera. There's nothing we can really do about that. Obviously, just we're going to have to hope that the water clears itself. And it's the bottom hairpin once again. It's not really a hairpin, but it sort of is. But anyway, we're closing in on Tom up to the back straight. But really, he's just too fast in a straight line for me to close in here. I'm getting a bit sideways through there. And John's actually lost a little bit to my dad here. I'm not too sure exactly what's going on there. Up to the top hairpin. I go at least trying to go for the wider line here. Tom's going a bit sideways through there. He's slid out a little bit. And I'm still all over the place and having to correct the, the cart so much of the time here. And uh, through the top hairpin here. Oh, John's gone for a slide. He's gone for a bit of a half spin and he's dr gone onto the grass. And unfortunately for John, the grass is going to be wet here. So it actually means that he can't get out. I think he's going to... He said he's tried to push himself out of the grass. But obviously, it's probably best to wait for the marshals here. And you can see me and Tom and my dad obviously coming up as well to the part of the track where John is off the track. So we're going to start going a bit slower, obviously, here. Act, you know, we won't show a, a yellow flag, but act it up like it is a yellow flag zone here. My dad going slowly as well here. You can see the, the zone where John has slid off here, and you can see the marshals sprinting up. You know, it's really the marshals at Filter Manor really are good. Everyone at Filter Manor is great. They really are helpful. But look at the bottom of the screen. I've gone side by side with Tom. I've gone round the outside here, getting a bit sideways on the exit though, and I managed to take the advantage. But Tom, with a better better speed out the corner, manages to go through once again. And my dad isn't too far back. 
if anything was to go out of this uh, race, obviously if there was a crash or something, you could definitely capitalise on this now. John has been cleared at the top corner, he's gone away again. You know, he's just probably, he's just he's lost over a lap, but he's not too far behind my dad, so maybe you can try and catch up to him in the remainder of this first race of the weekend. But you can see I'm really closing in here on Tom L. I knew this was the perfect opportunity at some point during this race here, I had to get past. This was a perfect opportunity to hopefully close off the championship. I mean, I can win the championship here today if I manage to get enough points over Tom. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how that all plays out, but... My dad's not actually losing much time here. It's still quite wet at this point here. And you know, the, the rain was still coming down. Everyone was sliding all over the place. It was really tricky conditions. To be fair, it was actually like this a bit all day. <laughs> like the intermittent um, rain conditions. Like it was raining a little bit. A lot of it was dry. It was tricky, but it made the race exciting because you didn't know what was going to happen the next time you went through a certain corner, whether it was going to be more wet or dry than the time before. So. You know, I kept put the pressure here on Tom, obviously, because you can see he's not going as quickly as he was in qualifying. I think he's probably quite worried about, you know, sliding off, obviously, considering he hasn't driven in the wet conditions an awful lot. Probably only got about 20 minutes last time. Uh, I think it was round number one, actually, and that was on the short track. And obviously, in the long track, you've got this corner here, this fast left-hander, which, if you can get that wrong at high speed, is not far, I'll tell you that. It's all very close there, Tom going quite... Uh, quite sideways and I nearly hit the back of him there but luckily I managed to avoid him and my dad still isn't that far back so if anything does happen here something really surprising could happen and he could grab a victory here so <laughs> we'll see what happens here but up to the top hairpin Tom's going defensive once again I'm going for the wider sort of faster line in wet conditions it's probably not it's definitely not the racing line I'd say that probably just a wider line in general around that top corner might be better but not widening, cutting back in. I don't really know, but anyway. I'm coming around the outside of Tom Hill here, and, oh, he's just, he's sort of slowed down an awful lot there, and just giving me the position, that you could almost say. And that's pretty surprising, but anyway, <laughs> I didn't expect that, but we've gone into the lead of this race here, and now we've just got to defend it. But look at the, that straight line speed it up to the top corner here. And I managed to just about defend it up to the top hairpin, turn it in through that hairpin, and there we are, all nice and good. And now, you can see actually, my dad's closing in a bit now because obviously I'm ahead and I'm probably defending an awful lot, which is slowing Tom L down, it's slowing me down. And it, you know, it's definitely giving my dad a bit of a chance here to, to close down that gap. So, the run to the start line, I could hear Tom was ultra close here, so I needed to, to pull my best defensive lines I possibly could here. So, I don't honestly know what the best sort of line to defend on this track is, but I just basically stay on the inside and just hope that he hasn't got a good enough run. I mean, if Tom has a really good run, he's just, just going to drive straight past me. So, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be tough here. But you can see he's putting the pressure on here. There's <laughs> a bit of rain literally directly in the middle of the camera where I am on Tom's camera view here. But it doesn't really matter. But up to the start finish line, once again, another lap ticked off here. It's going to be really close, this finale of this race here. A really, really close battle for the lead this race. There's so much pressure. Tom going past there. He's got a really good run. Is he going to cut back into front? It's side-by-side -side stuff on the brakes. I think I might break the tad later there. And Tom managing to slot right back in behind once again. Is he going to look for the inside here? He's got a really good run through there. Is he not going to look to the inside there? It's quite a dangerous corner to look for an overtake. But if you can, it is a really good place to get an overtake done. Because, you know, you can push the, the person out wide a little bit. And obviously that loses them a bit of ground. But Tom with an ultra amazing <laughs> um, run out of that last corner here. And he's really, really close here. He's going to look to one way than the next. He slowed up so much down that straight. I think, you know, if I hadn't driven that line down that straight I think it would have been easily through but you know it's just that defensive line I had to take it throughout this whole you know most of this lap now you can see Tom is literally right on the bumper here you know he's probably so, you know he wasn't very fast in the first part of this race here but it got drier and obviously then he could you know optimize his pace that he had in the, in the qualifying sessions and also the fact he could look at where I was gaining time on him when I'm ahead and He's obviously realising where I can, you know, where he can gain time and maybe maybe go for overtakes. But he's looking around the outside once again. That's probably not going to work out here. It's really tough to go for a move on the outside of that top here. They're not too sure if that's ever. I think I've I've not have overtaken them once or twice in the past. But it really is a tough place to overtake. I mean, definitely not advisable if you can avoid it if you can get past somewhere else. But anyway, a slightly better run at that last corner there for me at least. But still, Tom L with a great run nonetheless. And he's going to be looking down the straight here to possibly go past me here up to the top hairpin. 
I'm going to go to the inside line once again here. Tom is going to go side by side. Once again, though, I'm slightly later on the brakes. Managed to get that steered in. Slightly wider line through that corner than me, for me that time, which actually means I lose a bit of ground here. Tom's looking really close here. Is he looking to the inside? No, he's not going to look to the inside there. And you can see Tom's looking over there maybe just to see if the, the checker flag is out. But anyway, up to the, the start-finish line once again. I've actually got a bit of a gap here, so this is giving me a bit of a, a bit of breathing space, at least for maybe one straight here, but I'm still going to have to go defensive here because Tom is still going to be alongside me down the straight. And look at that speed down the back straight here, but he doesn't manage to go past once again. I managed to defend that position and keep ahead for now. It's really, really tough. This was definitely one of the tougher races. Well, it, I could, you know, I said afterwards, oh, Tom's looking at the inside. I briefly saw him in the corner of my eye in real life, and that was, well, that was really tough to, to tell if he was going to go for that move down the inside here. But anyway, running up to the start-finish line once again. This could be the last lap of the race, is it? I don't know. My dad's closing in once again up to the start-finish. Uh, sorry, down the straight. I made a contact side-by-side. Side. Tom may be trying to pull over there to try and get the inside line into the corner, but that's not the case. I've managed to defend it once again. It's really, really close stuff on this, I think, which is the last lap of the race. I could be wrong. I, you know, might be one more lap after this, but Tom's right, one really, really close. Oh, they're so, so close that there'd be more contact. And round the final corner, is it up to the start finish line? I think it is. You can see here, Tom's checking and he's, he's braked here. He's really slowed up. I'm not too sure what's happening here. I'm not too sure why he's done that. But anyway, he's braked a lot there right across the start finish line. But I managed to take a victory, which is really important for me. I needed to have, have that bit of a confidence boost. I mean, I think I drive out of my skin in that race. One of the best races I've ever driven. My dad's crossed the line and John's gone across the line as well. So looking at the race uh, one results, I won. And then Tom L was in second. My dad was in third. And then John was in fourth. So now we go to this second race, which is a bit complicated. So give me a little bit of time to explain it. So basically, what we're going to be doing is reversing those first orders. So basically, John's going to go out first. Then it's my dad. Then it's Tom. Then it's me. And then basically, after that, well... You know, John's going to go out first and then we're going to leave a gap of the, the gap that it was from him to third place in that first race. So he was actually a lap behind my dad in that first race. So John's going to go out, which is his, you can see what he's doing here. So he's going out. He's going to be completing one lap. So he's going to have a one lap advantage over everybody else. So you can see here, John wasn't 100% sure what was happening at this point here. So John was like, okay, I'm going to stop on the grid, but then he gets he's told to go. So John, here we go. He's going out for one lap. So he's going to have a one lap head start on everybody else in this race here. So this is going to be, it's going to be tough for John to lose this one. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, beat around the bush here. It's going to be tough for John to lose this race here. So he's just going to have to build up a bit of momentum. But anyway, so John's got that one lap advantage. Then it was the gap from uh, my dad to Tom. So my dad finished in third. So he's going to go out next. So he's going to go out as John's passes the start finish line so that's any second now then it was about a three or four second gap from my dad to Tom so then Tom will go out a few seconds after my dad and then a few seconds after Tom goes out I will go out and that is why Tom braked right at the end of the race that last race to give him a bit more of an advantage into the second race it makes sense you know it's, it's probably a bit tough to understand I mean I might leave a comment down below so you know you can read it and maybe understand it a bit better, but basically, it was completely reversing the, the last race results. Basically, giving John the, the lap back that he lost, and all the little gaps in between, hopefully it meant that at the end of the race, it would all bunch up together. That was the aim, that was the aim, to see, you know, by the end of this race, it would all bunch up together. But the fact that it took me forever to get out of the pit, I mean, it was pretty tough. You can see I'm already, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds behind Tom. I mean, there was only a four second gap after he braked right in the last corner it was only about a four second gap but it's up to about 15 seconds I mean that's just how slow I was getting out of the pit so I've lost over 10 seconds in that as well so Tom's really closed up to my dad already here I mean John has just got to stay focused here and he's got a victory I mean it's, it's definitely a novelty uh, victory you could say because obviously he has that one lap advantage but you know he obviously had that bad race in the first one where he had a spin so Obviously for him, you know, it's a bit of redemption, obviously, for making that mistake in the first race. It means that he gets that lap advantage in the second race. I mean, I know it's a bit of a novelty idea. You can see Tom's trying to go for a move with my dad, but he doesn't quite get that done. Does he? No, it's quite close, but I think my dad stays ahead for now. But, you know, it's given John a chance at a win here. And, you know, if everything worked out right, I mean, if people weren't using tactics, you know, like slowing up on the line, for example, or, you know, if John didn't spin, for example... It would actually end up being a really, really close race. Everyone should have bunched up together right at the end. But, you know, it's all, you know, as you can see, Tom's gone past my dad there. But it's all the little features about, you know, Tom getting, obviously, a much better run out of the pit lane than us. It's, it's hard for us to really, 
monitor that. So Tom's obviously gaining a few seconds on us as he exits the pits because obviously he's lighter than us so he can get up the hill a bit easier. You know, all those little things, it's really hard to judge. But, you know, thanks to everyone at Filtry Manor for letting us try this idea. I mean, I know it's a bit of a novelty idea. He probably won't try it again unless maybe we've got a better idea or something, you know, a bit of an alternative. To, but I definitely feel... You know, it was it was it was worth the try. It gave John obviously, you know, a lot of pressure to try and keep it on the track now and try and take his first victory. So John, even if he was overtaken by m me, Tom, or my dad, he still got a lap. He still got a lap ahead, basically. So if we anyone overtakes John, they're basically just unlapping themselves. I know it might seem a bit unfair, and you know, looking back at it, it probably was a bit unfair for everyone else because basically we're just shooting ourselves in the foot by, you know, just letting this happen. But you know, John had that mistake in the first race, so it's a, it's a chance for him to make up for those points he probably lost in that first race. So, anyway, that is the, the case nonetheless. So, let's just, you know, see how this race goes here. So, Tom is definitely going to be trying to close down John to unlap himself, first of all. And then Tom's going to hope that John makes a mistake, and then John can, you know, well, sorry, Tom can take that victory from John. So, basically, how the order looks at the moment, John is over a lap ahead of Tom. Tom is probably about 10 seconds ahead of my dad I'm about probably 10 seconds behind uh, my dad so you know John's got over a lap then it's Tom then it is my dad then it is me I'm currently in last place for anyone wondering yeah at this point in the race I was like, a bit devastated I was like wow this race you know this idea is really backfired I mean it was my idea completely to try this but it's sort of backfired me a bit but whatever it should make an interesting race and it's it's a different idea I mean it definitely changes everything up a little bit and uh, hopefully it was exciting for everyone else, you know, who's in it. I mean, it's just something a little bit different. We might try it in the future, you know, with a lot more people. It could be really exciting, but obviously quite confusing as well. But, yeah, once again, thank you for the guys at Filtry Minor for letting us try this. I mean, I, I don't know whether anyone else has ever tried it, but it's really nice for them to actually just let us try it. It was quite confusing to all sort out. But, anyway, Tom is really closing in on John here. Probably closing in at over a second a lap here. Tom had ultra, ultra pace, but you can see it really has cleared up in this race here, it basically is dry conditions once again now, so Tom will be setting some really fast lap times, I mean, he did have the fastest uh, cart by the looks of it, I mean, Tom, he's probably actually faster than me on average, but he probably makes a few more mistakes, so it sort of averages, you know, averages itself out a little bit, obviously, but, yeah, Tom obviously had a, a slightly better cart here today, I mean, I think John's cart was pretty decent as well, um, from what he was saying, uh, mine wasn't too great, but I don't think my dad's was either, so, you know, that's just what, what everyone was reporting. I mean, you can make up your own assumptions whether, you know, you believe whatever. And, you know, they are all slightly different at the end of the day. All the cards are slightly different. But, nonetheless, the, the biggest battle that's probably going on at the moment is that I'm catching up to my dad here. You can see on my screen at the bottom and then his screen at the top left that it's going to be closing up quite a bit here. So, hopefully, you know, soon I'm going to be able to go for an overtake here. He's made a bit of a wider line through that top corner there. So, running up to the hairpin at the top of the track here. Am I going to be able to go for a move? Is he going for a wider line? He's gone for a wider line, maybe cutting back in there. He's seen me and just sort of, I guess, let me through a little bit there. He didn't want to fight that, but that's put me up into third position here. I mean, something I've been sort of focusing on this whole season is trying to be on the podium in every single race. It's going to be tough, but, you know, if we can keep it together in this race here, that's another podium, and then it's only one round to try and get on the podium twice again. That will be pretty nice to, to be on the podium once again but you can see now on Tom's side of the screen here he's caught up to John but technically still a lap down so this is where it gets a bit confusing so even though t Tom looks like he's going to overtake John here uh, John's actually still going to be in the lead of the race by about well by just under a lap basically and up to the top hairpin here Tom's going to look to the inside is he he's not looked for the overtake is he oh, so quite close here. oh John oh, I don't know what was going to happen there John was taking a bit of a different line Tom wasn't expecting it and uh, John's actually doing a really good job at defending here. He's really doing some good lines here. I mean, he hasn't really ever had to be in a, in a proper race like this. He's obviously been practicing a lot by himself, I suppose. You know, sort of like a free practice session, I suppose you could call it. But now he's getting involved in racing a lot in this in this round here, which is really good for him, obviously, to get that experience. And hopefully next time he can have a proper race with someone throughout the whole of the race, not just a part of it. But anyway, to the top here, Ben here. Tom goes through. He unlapped himself, but John... He just needs to stay focused at this point here because he has, what well, now, just under a 30 second advantage on Tom, who's just unlapped himself. Probably like a 45, 50 second advantage on me. And then my dad, um, a bit further back as well. So, yeah, he's only got two and a half minutes to defend this here. So, unless he's losing, like five seconds, six seconds a lap, 
John has got this victory wrapped up here, so he just needs to be to be cautious here and maybe learn a bit from following Tom's line throughout the track. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty interesting to see. It'd be really good for John, obviously, to pick up a victory, but he needs to make sure he doesn't make a mistake here with a few laps to go here. I mean, it's only a few minutes to go, just over two minutes, I'd say, so four or five laps to go. So this would be really exciting to see if John can grab a victory. He he probably doesn't un wouldn't understand that he won because obviously because he's been overtaken by Tom here, but. He actually would have won this race. I mean, it's really confusing. Obviously, you could say it is a bit unfair. I mean, it is a bit unfair. Tom obviously was the fastest driver here today, but it looks like he's not going to pick up either victory, obviously, through the first race, where he was sliding all over the place, obviously, in the wet conditions, and obviously managed to capitalise on that. And in the second race, obviously, John had a lap head start on everyone, so I suppose for him, it was, it was always going to be tough to lose that victory here. So... Nonetheless, I mean, that's not taking with anything away from John here. He set his best lap by over a second here today. I mean, he got into the 30-second lap times, which is, you know, better than he's ever done before. I mean, I think before he's done a high 31, so a 31, not 8, 31, 9. And John's fastest lap time today was a 30.8, if I remember correctly. So he shaved another second off his lap time here in definitely less than perfect conditions. So... Once again, John getting faster and faster and faster, and you could say any time now he'll be battling for victories. You know, on a on a normal race. I mean, obviously we don't class this as a normal race, but it's still going to count it as a, a victory if he manages to get it. So, yeah, John's going to be just focusing here with probably about two laps to go now, and he's going to be grabbing a victory. But you know, maybe a bit of an unexpected one. Definitely going to to, to the to the day. Probably not expecting to get a victory, but. Definitely uh, deserved for keeping it on the track in the second race here and just keeping it all together. And he definitely thought he had the pace throughout these two races here to be faster than my dad in both of them and maybe beat my dad in both of them. So, you know, that's probably um, probably what he's really looking for is just the, the lap time, really, John. And maybe he could go, you know, go into next season, maybe, John would say, and uh, look for a better position in the championship. But it's all there. Uh, my dad getting lapped by Tom and John going to the top hairpin. John's gone for a little spin. Last lap of the race here. Is, is Tom going to manage to capitalise on it here? I've crossed the start finish line. I've finished the race in third position. Uh, John is just got to keep on the track now. Unless Tom goes across the line here and John's actually already won this race. So John... Yes, he has won this race. So John has taken his first victory in the Go-Kart Championship. Congratulations, John, there. Uh, my dad goes across the line as well. So John just goes around the final corner now, up to the start-finish line. John, he doesn't know it, but he's celebrating his first victory in the Championship. So congratulations, John. I mean, unlucky for Tom, really. I mean, he was ultra-fast here today. Set his best lap time ever, but just the race just didn't really work out for him the way it was laid out. I mean, I, just, I, I expected Tom to win that first race, to be perfectly honest. But anyway... There were the results, obviously, with John winning and uh, Tom finishing second. I finished third and my dad finished fourth. And that is how the sort of whole series is looking so far. So you can see I'm leading the championship at 134 points and I'm 27 points now ahead of Tom in second place there. So, yeah, I just need to score a few points in the next uh, round, obviously round six. Is I need to just score a few points there and I'll be crowned the champion. And yeah, so Tom's looking good to take second place in the championship. And then there's a big battle there for third place now, with John obviously catching up to my dad. So John's on 69 points, my dad's on 82. So there's a 13 point gap there. Can John overcome that and go into third place in the championship towards the end of this? That'd be really good to see if John can tag it at the final whistle. But yeah, that is it, guys. Thanks for watching this whole commentary. It's been Axe and I'm out of here. Goodbye.